Hey everyone, uh, my name is James. I'm a producer with Gearbox Software. Uh, hey, my name's Joel. I'm from 2K Australia. Um, in case people haven't seen the news lately, uh, 2K Australia and Gearbox Software are collaborating on an all new Borderlands title called Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. Now this is a full new standalone Borderlands title which is coming to Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and Windows PC in the fall of this year. And uh, we're here to give a run through of the demo that we prepared for PAX East earlier this year. Um, so why don't we get stuck into it? Yeah, all right, so right now we're looking at Athena, uh, who is one of the new playable characters. She's uh, a sort of a famous NPC from Borderlands 1 DLC, uh, the General Knox DLC. Uh, right now we're putting our, our skill points into the Phalanx Tree, which enhances her kinetic aspis, which is this energy shield that Athena has that allows her to absorb uh, attacks from, en from enemies and throw it back at them. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get looting. Over here we have uh, one of our new loot chests. We're gonna go and open up and we're gonna and see what we've got inside. All right, looks like we have uh, one of our new cryo guns. Uh, cryo is a new ice elemental uh, that we've introduced in the pre-sequel. Uh, fires ice bullets that allow you to freeze enemies and shatter them. Uh, we also have uh, the laser gun, which is a new gun type. So uh, it has different kind of laser attacks. Each manufacturer has their own kind. Right now we're looking at the Mali-1 uh, laser gun, and we might run into a couple of different types later on that we can show off. Uh, this is the Oz kit. This is an O2 kit. Uh, you need O2 because you're on the moon surface of uh, Pan uh, Pandora's moon surface, which is Elpis. And Elpis is just like uh, Earth's moon in the sense that there's a uh, very thin atmosphere, very low gravity. So you need oxygen, uh, but there's not really much on the surface. Um, Looking at our uh, other playable character, Wilhelm, you might have seen that there's a uh, sort of a shimmering bubble over his head. That's his oxygen uh, bubble. That allows him to breathe on the surface. Um, the entire time that you're out there, you're losing oxygen, but don't worry. We've got plenty of stuff in place to make sure that you, uh, that you always have opportunities to get more O2. Uh, case in point, we've just found one of the air geysers. You run on top of one of these things and it's gonna fill up your oxygen. This is really important, not just because you need oxygen to breathe and live, but because we have some new features that we've added uh, that use oxygen. Uh, Joel, why don't you tell us some about that? Yeah, so when we were bringing in this oxygen system, we didn't want to bring in something that was annoying to players and the resource to manage. We didn't want to bring in something that could give them cool new abilities. So you can see we're on the moon, you can already do low gravity jumps, but if we jump and then press jump again, um, you'll actually vent some oxygen and you'll do a boost. It'll allow you to go a little bit higher. You can also kind of push yourself forward. So why don't we uh, do a jump and then boost forward? Uh, and one of the other cool things you can do, it's, it's kind of my favorite thing to do in the game at the moment. It's, it's, it's technically it's called a slam, but I like to call it a butt stomp. If you jump up in the air, press jump again to boost, and then press crouch, you actually slam down to the ground and do an area of effect attack. It's a great way to manage crowds, to, to shove them back, because if you're in a low gravity area, you can push them back pretty far, which might be the edge that you need to either like, run away or focus on one guy before you deal with the rest of the crowd. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move into the next area. Uh, this is the comm facility. Um, there's a signal that's being jammed that you need to take care of so that you can get back up to Helios, which is the moonshot facility. Um, in the pre-sequel, uh, Jack is, uh, is in charge of, the, of Helios. He's not the Hyperion CEO yet that you know from Borderlands 2. Uh, right now he's just managing the station Signal and you've been kicked off and you gotta get back. Coming from that comms facility. Get in there, switch it off, because things are getting really interesting up here, kiddo, in a not fun kind of way. What's your bum in there? Reed Biller runs that place now, and I've heard he's a right nut job. Uh, you probably would have heard a bit of an Australian accent there. Uh, during the development of the game, it just so happened that uh, the moon kind of turned into Australia. All right, now, where we are right now, there's this big gap. You wouldn't be able to make this jump normally in Borderlands, but with the oxygen system, we can kind of push out this jump. So let's go ahead and see if we can clear that gap. All right, Athena, you're up. Get plenty of O2 so you can make this jump. Uh, this is my favorite part of the demo because I like to push our demo drivers to boost as late as possible. Whoa. Oh, just like that. I like to see them sweat. So why don't we keep moving? You'll notice when we boost that oxygen meter is draining. 
Uh, and you can see in the horizon there, there's actually a beam shooting up to the sky and a HUD marker, and that's an oxygen generator. We can activate that in a sec, but this is Borderlands, so, you know, you always loot. And, yeah, low gravity, no atmosphere. <laughs> but when you actually activate the oxygen generator, now there is atmosphere, so when we open up this other lootable, you'll see that it behaves differently. We want to make sure that the um, that this whole system felt organic, that it felt real, that it didn't just feel like it was tacked on. Um, this comes in really uh, important because with things like incendiary, uh, if you set someone on fire instead of a building with atmosphere, uh, they'll burn, but if you set them on fire in an area with no atmosphere, they won't. So you kind of have to make some, uh, you have some interesting opportunities. But these guys up here, I'm sure they're up to no good, so let's throw some grenades at them. So, in low gravity, uh, you get blown up by a grenade, you go flying into orbit. Very awesome. Now, you'll see these guys who are outside of the oxygen dome, uh, they're wearing the same bubble that you are, and if you manage to get a headshot like that, they'll actually start venting oxygen and become vulnerable. And uh, this really brings tactics into play for the player. So you, you can come into a space, and if you have a really kick-ass uh, incendiary weapon, you can choose to turn on the oxygen, or you can try and uh, take out their bubbles that way. But why don't we take a, take a chance to have a look at our, uh, our co-op buddy, Wilhelm. So people probably remember Wilhelm from Borderlands 2. He was the big robot that you fought right at the beginning, the first big boss. In this game, he starts out just as a man because this is his origin story as well as many other characters. And the really cool thing is, as you're building out his skill tree, not only do you gain new abilities, but you actually visually change him as well. You get robotic arms, robotic legs, shoulder-mounted rocket turrets. You're essentially building out his skill tree to tell the story of how he became the boss you fought in Borderlands 2, which we've had a lot of fun making. But I think uh, it's probably time to show off our first new action skill for Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. What do you think, James? Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. We're coming up on the barrier here for the uh, for the comp facility. This is being run by the Scavs, which are the Scavengers. They're essentially moon bandits. They're not going to let us in without a fight. Uh, they're even bringing out some heavy hitters, some turrets, but luckily we've got our, our Aspis to uh, help us with that. Let's try to absorb as much damage as we can and throw it back at them. So you can see that the uh, shield is slowly spinning up. Uh, as it takes more and more damage, it's going to spin faster and faster. Um, you can kind of see it all around the, the outer edge, uh, which means that we're just about ready to throw that back. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take care of this other laser and then get inside. Now, because we never get tired of blowing people off the side of the moon, let's throw some more grenades. We like to do these demos live. But because this is a, a co-op game, we can always rely on our buddies. That's right. Always better to play with friends. All right, now let's go ahead and show off the uh, the cryo gun. We showed a little bit of it earlier, but I didn't really get to see it in action. Let's go ahead and free some enemies. So we've actually built this uh, procedural system so you can freeze any enemy like that. And once you get their health down to a certain threshold, you can shatter them. It's not an instant win button because you do need to get their health down low, but when you manage to do it, it's really satisfying. And it's different every single time. And we're going to go and divide and conquer so we can wipe out these scabs a little bit faster. Um, and then we're going to try to meet back up in a little bit. Athena, freeze this guy and try to, try to stomp him. Athena had a good tactic there. If you manage to get really high, your butt stuff will actually do more damage. So if you free someone, you can butt stuff down and shatter them from above. Now, you can, you can do more than just freezing them uh, while they're on the ground. We've got some jet fighter, uh, some sort of jet pack enemies. Let's try to freeze them while they're in the air. So if we do manage to freeze one of these guys in the air and they fall down a railing, they'll actually split in half. It's one of these uh, kind of random events that I love to see in the game. 
But we, this is also a new enemy, uh, the Badass Outlaw. Now, this guy is pretty big, and because of the low gravity, if he charges into you, he can actually knock you pretty far. But when you shatter him into a million pieces, that doesn't really matter too much. It's very satisfying. Now, we did get a new skill point while we were out there, so let's uh, go ahead and allocate that. We're going to put it into the uh, the ultimate skill in this tree, uh, which is Wrath of the Goddess. This will allow uh, Athena's shield to bounce around multiple enemies inside of a sort of like a close circle. This is a great way to manage crowds. Oh, uh, Wilhelm, it looks like he got something. What is that? So that's the Dar laser. That's uh, kind of like a bolt laser. Athena, you picked up the Molly One beam laser before, and as James said earlier, you have multiple manufacturers, you have the procedural weapon system, so players can expect to see a whole variety of different types of lasers when they play the game. Uh, to the right here, uh, you'll see one of the new rideable vehicles in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, the Stingray. Uh, we're not going to need in this mission, so we're going to keep moving forward. But keep an eye out, because we might have something more about that um, in some later news. Alright, looks like I found another loot chest. Let's pop this open and see what we have. Let's see if we have a, a new Oz kit over to the right here. So what does this Oz kit do? Let's see. So it looks like it uh, increases your oxygen meter. Um, it allows you to create an oxygen bubble, which comes in really handy when doing a slam. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that to Wilhelm and uh, see if we, can, if we can do some damage with it. So the Eye of Helios is uh, charging up now, and it's actually firing into the surface of the moon, which is probably not such a good thing when you see uh, bits of the ground kind of floating above you like that. Probably a good reason for us to get back up to that space station as soon as possible. Alright, so we've got a group of enemies coming up, uh, and so we're going to use our buddy Wilhelm to help us charge up our shield so we can get it going, because you can use friendly fire uh, to charge up Athena's shield. Let's try and take out all those guys at once. Nice. Awesome. Alright, well, um, yep, butt stomp time. And you see that bubble, uh, you can run inside that to, to recharge your oxygen. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you can also use the oxygen to set enemies on fire when you're out in this sort of area. Uh, so maybe we get a chance to use that, maybe we don't. Yeah, it is, it is a really good combo if you get that oxygen bubble with the fire to burn enemies, but I really love getting the cryo one as well, so if you jump down from high enough, butt stomp and shatter and freeze a guy all in one go. Why don't we try and get some more butt stomps happening? I never get tired of it. Uh, so we've, we've got some little scabs and a little outlaw here. Uh, this is a really good opportunity to try and charge that shield right up. So absorb some more damage. It's fully spinning now. So just move back a little bit, Athena, and fire it off. Oh, awesome. Nice. Now there's a lot more resistance in this area than we than we planned. We might need a little more help on this one. Who who could help us out possibly? Uh-oh. All right, we really need some, down. Help we need some help And we have hey. playable Claptrap. For the first time ever in a Borderlands game, you get to play as Claptrap. And he's going to help us out a little bit in this fight. Thanks, buddy. All right, let's wipe these guys out. And the other playable character in Borderlands the sequel is Nisha the Lawbringer, who fans of the franchise will also remember. We'll be talking about her at a later date. Beautiful frozen badass outlaw. Yeah. 
So yeah, we should probably head in here and try and disable that signal so we can get up to the space station. All right, you better get him, Athena. Uh, getting close. Uh, did we mention low gravity already? All right, so uh, we're actually gonna be playing through as Wilhelm during this playthrough, and uh, we're selecting his action skill now, which is his ability to uh, spawn these two drones, Wolf and Saint. Wolf is an attacking drone, while Saint is more of a, a buffing regen drone. Uh, we're going to go down uh, the Cyber Commando skill tree. This one's really cool because if, if fans remember Wilhelm from Borderlands 2, he was just a, a giant loader with a human head on top. But in this game, it's his origin story, and he starts out just as a man. But you have the ability by going down this skill tree to start turning him into that giant robot that he was in Borderlands 2. We're selecting the Power Fist skill here, and you'll see that they actually replaced his arm with this robotic one. This one's really cool because it will deal extra melee damage, and you can actually uh, attack enemies from further away. And if you look at the uh, Shock Absorbers one, which uh, replaces his leg with a robotic leg, this allows you to shoot and reload while you're sprinting, which can come in really handy. The Meteor Slam is also uh, really useful because uh, the Butt Stomp or Ground Pound or, or Slam or whatever we're calling it today uh, is really, really powerful in Borderlands per sequel. When you're playing in low gravity, you're able to do this huge amount of damage when you slam down to the ground. And that's about all the skill points we can use right now, uh, but we're pretty close to leveling up again. So when we do, we're going to show you uh, the Vengeance Cannon, which is uh, Wilhelm's capstone skill inside the Cyber Commando tree. Yeah. We have a look here, we actually just uh, shot an air geyser, and when these are shot, they shoot out this oxygen, which replenishes your Oz kit, but it also propels you up in the air. And the higher you get, uh, the more damage you can do from your butt stomp. So uh, if you hold that crouch button, you slam down the ground, you deal this huge amount of damage to um, enemies on the ground. Yeah, geysers are a great way to do a slam immediately instead of having to kind of like prime yourself for it. You can hop on one of those and just immediately move off and slam someone into oblivion if you want to. Here's another example of, of how the levels are drawn by low gravity in Borderlands per sequel. You're able to do these massive leaps and bounds and uh, really you have a lot more freedom as a player that the scope of travel has uh, increased so much. And we're able to use the air boost by venting some oxygen. You're actually able to go even further by propelling yourself forward or even higher. Yeah, and it's cool that we have these abilities. They obviously come with some cost on the oxygen meter, uh, but we get plenty of ways for you to get that oxygen back. You know, we've got uh, oxygen canisters that drop from when you kill enemies. Uh, we have the air geysers. We have uh, we have other like cracks in the ground that air can come out of. They won't give you that jump, but they will give you back your oxygen. We also have oxygen generators. And even like certain Oz kits will allow you to create an oxygen bubble whenever you do a slam attack. Now these enemies that we're fighting at the moment, the Kragans, they're some of the moon beasts. Uh, they're essentially these, these moon rock monsters, but because this is Borderlands, they absorb elemental attributes as well. And these ones have absorbed cryo damage. Uh, we have a lot of liquid methane around uh, this area of Elpis, and uh, they've kind of inherited those abilities. And they're kind of uh, doing cryo damage towards you. Um, but you have the ability to, to kill them, but what's really interesting about these guys is when you kill them, they actually shatter into two smaller Kragans. Yeah, so you might start off one-on-one -on -one and feel like you've got a pretty even fight, but as they break into smaller groups and become more numerous, you might have a really big fight on your hand. Alright, why don't we uh, try and show off the Wolf and Saint here, Wilhelm? Where you go? Alright, so Wilhelm just deployed Wolf and Saint. Those are his two drones. Uh, Wolf is going to go out and cause some, you know, some trouble. Saint's going to stay fairly close by to replenish uh, Wilhelm's shields as they ever drop. Now our Wilhelm player is pretty pro, so you know, might need to get a little bit of a more challenging fight for him. You can see these beautiful ice pa particles. Uh, with the new cryo element that we brought into the game, uh, you can freeze and shatter any, any enemy. And uh, depending on which angle you attack these guys from, uh, they're actually going to float off into low gravity in that direction. If you, if you slam down an enemy while they're frozen, you're actually going to split them in half and watch their uh, ice chunks float off. Yeah, that's really cool because um, the way that they shatter is always kind of customized to like whichever way uh, you hit them. 
So it never really gets old. It's always different each time. It's really fun. Now, our current objective uh, in this particular level is to redirect uh, some liquid methane. We need to get to the Drakensberg, which is this derelict Dahl ship where uh, we've been informed there's a military AI that we can use. Jack wants to build up this robot army. He needs this military AI to use it. So uh, we're currently trying to redirect this methane to cool off uh, a lava river. Now, we were just fighting the Kraken, but over here you can actually see that some of the scabs uh, are actually riding them, which is hitting them, which, you know, you gotta watch out for it because you have two enemies attacking you, and whenever you kill one of these Kraken riders, you might get a couple of little Kraken riders coming out of them. You see, Wilhelm was also using these jump pads, so along with the oxygen geysers, we have these Dahl uh, jump pads which are placed throughout the levels, and some of these shoot you straight up into the air, and other ones kind of propel you really far forward. Again, uh, if you manage to chain some of these together, you can get really, really high and do a slam, which does a massive amount of damage. Look at some of these guys, and you'll see that uh, some of these scavs have the sort of orange bubble over their head. That's their oxygen bubble. Uh, that means that if you crack that bubble, then they're going to take oxygen damage because uh, they're not able to breathe. Uh, which is a really cool way because you can kind of do a hit and run. You don't have to worry about necessarily about finishing them off if you're taking too much heat. You can just wait for them to asphyxiate. But some of these guys also have shields and air bubbles, and so they have, they're a little more of a stronger fight. You have to watch out with those guys because they're more dangerous. So you can see that's an example of one of the Dahl uh, jump pads, which shoots you really far forward. And here we have some of the, the Dahl jet fighters, uh, and they're, they're going to fly around and uh, try and do a huge amount of damage to you. And Wilhelm is doing pretty well. Yeah, that was a spot-on hit. That was really good. Oh, oh no! But you fell off the side. That's okay, because we've got plenty of jump pads. Uh, we have a lot more verticality in uh, Borderlands now than we ever did before. Uh, so there's... Um, there's not necessarily any one way to get to this objective. Uh, really, all you have to do is just find a, either a jump pad or a way to jump uh, from, from platform to platform. Yeah, something really great about the, the low oxygen, it allows you to traverse these maps really, really quickly. So you can, Because you can make these massive leaps and bounds and you have these jump pads, um, you're able to get from one end of the map uh, very, very fast and uh, really get an edge on the enemies. All right, now it looks like we just leveled up. Uh, so we're going to go and put that skill point in uh, Vengeance Cannon. That's really interesting because um, you, if you take a certain amount of damage, uh, Wilhelm responds with the Vengeance Cannon and can do a great amount of damage within a pretty generous uh, period of time. You have about 30 seconds um, of, of, ac of action yeah, on this. You can come in really, really powerful when you're under the pump. Yeah. So you can see now we've act we're actually redirecting this uh, liquid methane, so we should be able to uh, go over and try and freeze this lava lake. Alright, so once this pipe connects, we actually have an, another route on how we can get to the next objective. You could just go down to the ground if you wanted to, uh, but because of the verticality in the pre sequel, we can actually continue along this path here. All you have to do is have the option to make the jump, and then you can actually run along this pipe here. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of ways to explore this map and get to pretty much anywhere you need to get. Yeah, it's really, see, it's really cool as well. Uh, our level designers have built the map so, uh, especially when you're playing co-op, you can have uh, each player, they can approach each of these uh, sites from different angles. So we could have taken that pipe all the way along while Athena went down uh, by the ground and went over to the, um, by the jump pad. Yeah, people that are especially fond of sniping uh, should keep an eye out for these kind of opportunities because um, you get a superior angle from which you can snipe off those oxygen bubbles or just do just a bunch of damage in general. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to continue along this way, and Athena's going to continue uh, on the ground, and they're both getting that. She's going to jump across this chasm here, and we're going to get on to the next big fight. Yeah, we should be able to ambush these guys by taking them from two different angles. Once Wilhelm, you know, finds a way to jump over this. <laughs> there we go. All right, so in this area here, we've got some jetpack uh, scavs. We also have some guys that are on foot. They actually see a scav that Athena just killed just flying off in the distance. Mm -hmm. And he'll go on like that for quite some time. Yeah, if he still has any life left in him, he's getting pretty beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, no. Athena's down. Hey, Wilhelm, now why don't you go ahead and uh, revive her using the oxygen? Yeah. So you kind of have these cool you know, kind of uh, tactical decisions. You can revive your downed players faster with oxygen than if you just you know do it the normal way. 
Uh, but that obviously comes at a cost, but you know, sometimes it's really good to get them in the fight faster. Beautiful. You can see uh, we have these jetpack scabs, so all of the enemies on Elpis can take advantage of the low gravity just as much as you can. So if you're uh, getting protection behind cover, they can actually jump over and stomp on you and invalidate your cover just like you can them. We really wanted this gravity system to go throughout every single feature in the game. Just a pretty awesome butt stunt there. Yeah, that was solid. Here's some of our uh, new mini machines that we're just kind of teasing as we run by them, but you can see more about them later on. All right, we're coming into the processing plant now. Um, this is uh, actually where you where you just directed the uh, liquid oh, no. methane to, and it's really important that you do this because uh, we're going to use it to freeze a lava river so we can form a natural bridge and cross over to the dragon's part in the next round. Now this has a lot of enemies in it. Definitely a good time to bring out wolfy scenes. Yeah, try and use those jump pads to get a hot advantage of the plays as well. We stomp down. He just uh, shocked that scab when he did that ground hunt because of his uh, because of the Oz kit that he has. It's really cool because each Oz kit uh, can have a variety of features on it. Some of them uh, will do you know your basic oxygen extension, but some also add elemental attacks. Uh, some will create uh, oxygen bubbles whenever you do a slam. Uh, there's a lot of layers to this because you know, it's really important to us that our gear um, you know, be relevant and be in an option really cool stuff. Um, obviously, these sort of uh, varieties are really important to us. When we, whenever we added the ice elemental, this also is represented across all gear items. So, you know, you've got it in shield, you've got it in grenade launch, you've got it in guns. Um, and we also have lasers. Uh, lasers support all the elementals, so we, um, we've added even more bazillions of, of gear. Yeah, you can see max. right here we have an ice laser. So we're able to shoot this beam, this kind of freeze ray, and uh, then we can uh, we butt stomp and hopefully shatter this guy. Getting close. Nearly. Uh-oh. The higher you get, the more damage you're going to do. So, very close. Ah. Uh, uh, can you just take out kill? Yeah. That's okay, though. It's always next time. So it looks like we cleared out the enemies here. Uh, let's try and get that methane onto the lava river. It is Borderlands though, so you always have to loot. That's right. Let's take all of them over. <laughs> Ninja. You can see the Drakensberg out there in the distance, so that's our objective. We want to get to this crashed Dahl ship to get this military AI. Once we get that military AI, uh, Jack can put into the loaders, which up until this point have been useless. You know, they're just construction bots, basically. Uh, but once we put the AI in them, we'll be able to weaponize the loaders and reclaim Helios, which is the moonshot facility. I need you to dump the methane from the reservoirs into the lava. We'll create our own path by cooling it off. This is gonna be ace! The lake should be safe now. Let's get to the All right, success. So Let's make our way over to the Dragon's Lads, looks like we're going to have guests over. The kind that Bosun wants dead as quickly as possible. Of course, won't Borderlands be without a bunch of big baddies to have to fight? Yep, they just get bigger and bigger. I really like that he's an ice dragon, but he also has lava inside of him. Yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, guys, and that's uh, that's uh, our E3 demo. We hope you enjoyed seeing it. Uh, please stay tuned for more pre-sequel news. All right, so we're taking a look at Nisha's action skill right now. Uh, her action skill is Showdown. Yeah, Showdown's uh, this kind of cowgirl promise that uh, Nisha has. When you activate, you go into this uh, spaghetti western mode where you have the sepia tone and this really cool music, and you you target the um, the critical spots on all of the enemies around. But you do have to uh, be active in it because you hold that left trigger and you flick between enemies, trying to take out as many as you possibly can. Yeah, and I mean. 
uh, especially if you're using something cool like a, like a Jacob's Revolver, you're going to be pulling that trigger nonstop, yeah. and you're going to be kind of fanning between all of your all of the enemies available. What's really cool though is that we have skills that will allow you to, to stretch out, so you can be in showdown for minutes. Yeah, the more kills you get, the longer it's it's going to last. All right, now we're taking a look at the law and order tree. And this is a really interesting tree because um, it kind of focuses on the idea of pain and gain. That is sort of give and take in combat. Um, as Nisha takes damage in some of these areas, uh, she can actually become stronger, either dealing more damage in return or even getting her shield back. Um, this also kind of focuses on her bull whip, which is her melee ability. Yeah, and this is the first time we've actually had a long distance melee weapon in Borderlands. Um, this is also the fan the hammer tree, uh, which focuses much more on, on, on pistols. And what's really cool uh, about the capstone skill in this one is that she's able to duplicate her pistol and essentially gun zerk. Yeah, but, but the really cool thing about this is it's for the rest of the game. Once you have this capstone, if you have a pistol, you then duplicate to have two pistols for the rest of the entire game. Very cool. And the last skill tree is the rifle woman. This is very much our sort of classic cowboy concept. You know, it's all about run and gun, hip fire, headshots, um, a lot of fun. Uh, we're, I think today, though, we're going to focus on the law and order skill tree. Yeah, I think uh, law and order really shows some of Nisha's personality. You know, she, she kind of takes a, a bit of pleasure in taking that pain and dealing it back to the bad guys. It's also very flashy because um, as she's getting her order stacks from, being, from taking damage, uh, these sheriff badge icons will pop up on the screen. And whenever you use her capstone course with her melee, uh, she'll do this massive uh, shock damage uh, to enemies, and it just lights up the room very nicely. Yeah, it looks great. Very cool. All right, now we're going to hit the ground running. Um, people that have seen the uh, E3 demo will remember that uh, Jack has been working with a boy named Pickle uh, to help him find a military AI. Yeah, this is a direct continuation of our E3 demo, and uh, we've made our way finally to the Drakensberg, which is this derelict Dahl ship that's crashed here. And we've been given information that uh, there is a military AI in here being held by a guy called the Bosun, and uh, he's being held by another person called the Skipper, and they're going to stop us, uh, tr at least try and stop us from getting that military AI, because it's what's keeping the ship running. Right, and they're able to uh, effectively stop us because they have an army of scavs exactly. at, their, at their disposal. But what are scavs? Well, the scavs are these uh, ex dahl engineers who came down to mine Elpis years ago before the Krakening. But when the Krakening happened on Elpis, uh, Dahl abandoned them and they've been stuck here and they've been scavenging and, uh, you know, they've gone a bit stir-crazy. But they've, they've made do and a lot of them are living in the Drakensberg ship right now. So they, they don't want you to come and steal their military eye, even though Jack needs it to power up his loaders. Yeah, they don't seem too keen uh, by our presence. Very cool. Now, uh, Nisha just did her cryo slam nice. because of her Oscar, which is really cool. Um, I think one of my favorite things about the pre-sequel uh, is that you're able to freeze enemies and shatter them. It just looks so awesome. Yeah, I mean, the fact they're in low gravity just makes it even more beautiful. When you shatter someone like Nietzsche did with a nip right, her whip right there, you see their eyes start floating off into the orbit. And Nisha just hit uh, th this robber with her whip, and you can see that it was a fairly long distance melee, and she was able to sh you know, get a good shock going with it. And you can see those uh, Sheriff Stars are coming up now, which means that she's been taking that damage and she can then deal it back. So she stores that up just to give it straight back to them. Yeah, you know, in your traditional uh, combat, you're always kind of wanting to keep your, your shields up and your health. But uh, Nisha kind of kind of has some fun with that concept because um, you want her to take damage. You know, you don't want to go down all the time, but like you want uh, you're, you want to be taking hits because it makes you more powerful. Yeah, I think our designers have actually had a lot of fun taking the player character's personality um, into their minds when they've designed their skills. What large groups, what's really a, a great ability is for Shodan because she's able to clear them out really quickly. You know, getting massive numbers of crit shots in a very short period of time. I mean, she has made short work of those two scabs. Oh, we see a uh, claptrap in the distance there going to pirate ship mode. Uh, yeah. He's helping us out, taking out some scabs himself. It was very nice. It's always good to have a friend along, especially someone like claptrap, because yeah. he's very eager to please. Definitely. He'll take any friend he can get.
And you see the uh, the scabs, one of them had a little badge icon above his head. That's to kind of show like who's been dealing damage to you uh, and who you can impact with because some of uh, Nisha's skills focus on that. Yeah, she's a little bit into revenge, Nisha. That's all right, though. Yeah, this guy's it. asking for it, I think. Oh, yeah. He's been dealing quite a bit of damage. And that whip just took his, his health down to by half, which is really cool. And he's done. All right, so we're heading inside the Drakensberg now. Uh, they're probably not, uh, you know, waiting to hand over their military AI for us. You know, as nice as that would be, we're probably going to encounter some resistance. Yeah, that's okay, because I've got a really good feeling about Showdown in this room. Once we get their attention, she uh, should be able to clear them all out pretty quickly. Good slam to start it off with. Yep. Nice. Yeah, it effectively just took down, I think, three or four scabs right there. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, Nisha really likes to come into a room and clear it from, from the opening door. See if she can shatter these enemies in time. Uh, he defrosted just in time to get shot. Yeah, I think it all worked out. And that was uh, Claptrap's uh, clap in the box <laughs> skill right there in action. People may have noticed that he was walking by with one of those uh, like old timey uh, uh, bombs with like the short uh, fuse on it. Very cute. Uh, that was a huge amount of damage right then. Yeah, and you know, we're in true Vault Hunter mode, so enemies here are going to be tougher. They're also going to deal a lot more damage. Um, and with the way that Nisha is specced out today, that actually works in her favor. And you see, we're in oxygen at the moment, so these guys are going to maintain that burning status. Looks like the bosun isn't just going to give us the AI. No, pro probably not on the top of his priority list at the moment. Uh, he's probably going to get the skipper to try and stop us, I think. Well, that's all right, because, uh, you know, Nisha's very powerful. She's got Claptrap to back her up. Should be fine, I, th I think. Yeah. I think they might be having uh, some troubles in their relationship as well, the skipper and the bosun. So uh, there's a chance we may be able to sway her to our side. Yeah, the skipper might come in handy. Looks like the uh, the bosun has sent some more enemies to come and try to stop us. Let's get an awesome slam in here. Yep. Nice. Very nice. Nisha just cleared out all of his shields with her bullet. And uh, Nisha's just been clap trapped as well. Uh oh. With uh, the fun zerking. Slam. Nice. Very cool. I mean, that scout was. Uh, had a lot of health left still, and she just knocked him out with that whip. Yeah, well, it looks like the skipper may have some reasons to help us after all. Excellent. All right, so it looks like we have a new ally uh, with the skipper. She's going to open the door for us and get us outside. And I think that's a great time for us to kind of wrap up this video. Uh, thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel, comes out in North America on October 14th. Uh, and it comes out October 16th in Australia and October 17th the rest of the world. Thanks, everyone. And I am Sir Hammerlock, gentleman archaeologist. We hear you're planning a trip to Elpis, Pandora's moon. Just so you know, you're probably gonna die, but it will still be totally awesome! Elpis is a most controversial locale. 
You see, between the events of Borderlands and Borderlands 2, the man who would eventually become Handsome Jack hired four vault hunters to save mankind from a brand new evil. These escapades are chronicled in Borderlands the Free Sequel, which is an invented word denoting both prequel and sequel. SHAKESPEARE! <laughs> You've likely killed many things on Pandora already, but things are quite different up here on Elpis. For realsies! Yes, for realsies. The gravity is even lower, so you can jump extremely high into the atmosphere for acrobatic gunfights. Additionally, if you have an oxygen kit, or an Oz kit as the locals refer to them, you can slam down from great heights to squish your enemies to death. This maneuver is called a gravity slam! Do not call it a butt slam! You can also find upgraded Oz kits that add elemental damage to your slams, like fire or shock or acid or explosions, or I have changed my mind, you can call it a butt slam. Butt slam. But that's not all Oz kits can do. You know what's better than jumping? Cuddling with someone you love very much. You know what's almost as awesome as that? Double jumping. Double jumping allows you to reach all new areas and traverse the environment with greater freedom than you ever had on Pandora! But Oz kids aren't the only loot you'll find on Elpis! Whispering! I know how much you like loot because we are best friends and I put your needs before my own! Well said, Mr. Torg. Pandora has 87 bazillion guns, but Elpis has even more. Take the new cryo weapons, for instance. For the first time ever, you can freeze an enemy with cryo damage, which will immobilize them and make them utterly helpless. Once you've done enough damage to them, they shall shatter into tiny little ice shards. Or maybe you're too cool for freeze weapons. Maybe you're more about blasting stuff with space science. Lucky for you, Elpis is chock full of laser weapons. You want to pew pew somebody with a blaster rifle? You can do that! You want to fire a massive railgun blast that kills a bad guy in one hit? No problem! Heck, help us even has laser shotguns! Laser shotguns! You're welcome! Not only that, but scientists even made a continuous laser beam that looks just like the one from that movie, Ghost Dad! And if you get a piece of loot you don't like, Three items to grind. you can always toss it into the brand new grinder machine. Grinder Put less awesome things into the grinder, grind them up, and get something moderately more awesome. But who will be using all this loot, you ask? Easy. Four brand new Volt Hunters. A cyborg mercenary. A gunslinging sadist. An annoying robot. And a deadly gladiator. Gender equality! Wilhelm the Enforcer uses his two surveyor drones to tear up the battlefield. Wolf, his offensive drone, flies around attacking enemies. While Saint, his defensive drone, hangs back and heals Wilhelm like a true bro, as Torp would say. I would say that! You can also outfit Wilhelm with cybernetic enhancements! All systems are a go! Welcome to Robot Punch City! Population! Everyone's faces! Nisha the Lawbringer does not even give a tenth of a f With her showdown skill, Nisha automatically locks onto nearby enemies and gets increased everything! Gun damage, fire rate, reload speed, accuracy! If she's pissed enough, she can clear out an entire room in only a few seconds! Every time she takes damage, she also gains a stack of order! If she gets enough order, Nisa can use a lightning whip to do a downright bananas amount of damage to the enemies in front of her! That's right! Nisha likes dealing pain just as much as she likes receiving it! Which may seem weird to you, but don't judge! Whatever gets you there? Athena the Gladiator is unstoppable once she pulls out her kinetic Aspis shield. The more enemies shoot at Aspis, the more damage it does once Athena holds it like a weapon. She can even upgrade it to ricochet off multiple enemies. Athena can also use her sword to make enemies bleed. If she then grabs the You've Got Red on You skill, all bleeding enemies explode when they die. It is scientifically the best thing imaginable! Claptrap the Frag Trap is, shall we say, tricky. His Vault Hunter .exe program will analyze the battlefield, determine which Vault Hunter would be best suited for blowing up all of its problems right then, and then reprogram Claptrap to fight in that particular manner. 
Perhaps he'll unleash a barrage of cannon fire on his enemies. Or maybe he'll summon the spirit of the Gunzerker and dual wield. He might even unleash his inner psycho and go into full-on meat bicycle mode. Or if you mess up and just make the entire team uncontrollably bouncy! It's not malware! It's a feature! Here I come to play the game! Zip that sh Oh, and this time around, the Vault Hunters will be much chattier Cathy's than before! Like the fun kind of talk? Or the dull kind. This is so friggin' hot. While the old ball tenders didn't have much to say outside of combat, these four new badasses will have lots to say about the story and their place in it. I'm programmed to be foolishly optimistic in situations such as these. Why am I not surprised? Characters, I show! Speaking of characters, you'll be seeing some new faces on Opus, in addition to some familiar ones. This is Springs, a super nice scrap vendor with a super huge crush on Athena. This is Nurse Nina, who will keep you alive, but totally laugh when you're in pain. Also, Moxie is on the mood for some reason. Reasons. But anyway, Opus requires your help quite badly. You see, a number of homicidal doll soldiers known as the Lost Legion have taken over Hyperion's orbital moon base, and they plan to use its enormous laser to destroy both Elpis and Pandora. Only the Vault Hunters, aided by a lowly Hyperion programmer named Jack, can stop the Lost Legion's commander from killing thousands of innocent people. Which is weird, because Jack, Wilhelm, and Nisha end up being bad guys in Borderlands 2. So it's like, wait, am I a bad guy? Over the so-called bad guys, not as bad as I thought. Moral ambiguity! Taste the Nietzsche in a conflict, mother The abyss gate is also into you. Or, if looking into the heart of darkness isn't your thing, you can still have a buttload of fun checking out the new moon environments. There's lava stuff, moon stuff, sexy caverns, no big deal. Also, cities. Also, big holes in the ground. Also, all the cool stuff on Hyperion's Helios moon base that I didn't mention in the preceding list. Hammerlock, talk about enemies or something. Of course. Many new baddies shall attempt to stop your heroic efforts. Lost Legion engineers will deploy turrets and singularity reactors to suck you in. While you're shooting at them, a Lost Legion medic might come in and heal them, thus screwing up all your plans. Later, perhaps you'll run into a beastly Kragon. You'll kill it, but then, good gracious, you'll split into two smaller Kragons who are equally deadly. What quirk of evolution resulted in such a defense mechanism? Or, better question, who cares? Why try to learn stuff when you could just spread them over with one of the new moon vehicles? Their physiology doesn't count for much when they're crunching under your wheels or burning under your hover jets. Am I right? You are not at all right, but please continue. For all the stuff that's new in Ghost Dad, everything you liked before is back. Four player co op, split screen, item trading, badass ranks, except now you can show off your rank to all your friends. Tons of skills, multiple playthroughs, head customizations, skin customizations, vehicle customizations, internet memes. Just kidding, we didn't leave the f out of all those internet memes. Those were awful. Our bad! Wow, such memes very regret. It's nearly time, you badass of badasses! The Lost Legion is on the warpath, and it's up to you and Jack to save the world. Grab a freeze gun, high-five your best friend, 